السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household, his companions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless every one of us and grant us goodness and mercy. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was was cast into the fire by his own father and by his people when he was young. He called out to Allah using specific words. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used the same words when he was told that Abu Sufyan had now come, he was coming back to actually attack. The people were coming back to attack. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used similar words. These words were very, very powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about these words in more than one place in the Quran. It's important for us to know what these powerful words are that made the fire cold. These powerful words of supplication that instilled within the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the peace, the calmness and the tranquility on a day when if it were anybody else, they would have been so uh, uh, discontent, so worried and concerned. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best disposer of our affairs. That is the dua. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah is sufficient for us. We don't need anyone else. We trust Allah. We know that Allah is enough for us. نعم الوكيل means he is the best disposer of all our affairs. Now, if we take a look at the Quran, uh, in Surah At-Tawbah, verse number 129, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا If they are going to turn away. فَقُلْ So, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we want you to say, حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ Allah is sufficient for me. There is none worthy of worship besides Him. I lay my trust upon Him fully. And He is the Lord of the great throne. Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, this is a very, very strong dua. When you're feeling helpless, when you need to be calmed, when you need contentment, when you want the help of Allah at a time where you think that there is no way out, that nothing you could do that would help the situation, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ or حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمُ This is declaring that Allah is enough for us. He is the only one worthy of worship and indeed all our trust we lay upon Him and He is the Lord of the great throne. So that was a dua that I felt was extremely important to make mention of while we are speaking of supplications from Revelation because it has been revealed several times and it has been used by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after it was used by Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, and various others and I'm sure we would read it in the Quran we would also appreciate its meaning we would be able to feel within our lives the effect and impact of such beautiful prayers that were made by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we go further, we will notice that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about uh, du'as of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He instructs him to make a du'a, for example, وَقُرْ رَبِّ غْفِرْ وَارْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, My Lord, forgive and have mercy, for indeed you are the best of those who have mercy. So this is an instruction to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is being told to seek the mercy of Allah, yet Allah is the most merciful upon him. He was the best of creation and he is being asked to seek forgiveness. Yet he did not need that forgiveness. The lesson is definitely for every one of us. If we would like to use that supplication, we say it in the following way. رَبِّ غْفِرْ وَرْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ رَبِّ غْفِرْ وَرْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ O oh my Rabb, forgive and have mercy, for indeed you are the best of those who have mercy. We are talking here about having mercy upon us, forgiving us. So although it just says, Ighfir warham, have mercy and uh, uh, forgive and have mercy, it is referring to us. And this is what we would actually be 
benefiting from. It's also a beautiful dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used and he made the dua, he was instructed to make it as well because the lesson was more for us. Uh, we are the ones who need it. Uh, the surprising thing is we who need it don't really make the dua and those who did not need it such as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they made that dua so often. We move to another beautiful supplication from the revelation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being instructed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in Surah Al-Nasr. I'm sure many of us know the Surah of Bayhat. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا When the help of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala comes and victory, and you see the people entering into the fold of Islam in droves, then Allah says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا So declare the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or glorify uh, in the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of your Rabb. وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ means and seek his forgiveness for indeed he is most forgiving. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to actually say, سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ uh, glory be to Allah and all praise is due to Allah. I seek the forgiveness of Allah and I repent to him. And as I said, he did not need repentance nor seeking of forgiveness, but the lesson is for every one of us. We find in the supplications of the Prophet wasallam that he used to seek the forgiveness of Allah between 70 and 100 times a day, according to some of the narrations. So we need to ask ourselves, how many times do we seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many of us, the days pass, the nights pass, and we haven't even sought the forgiveness of Allah. Let's become into the habit of seeking the forgiveness of Allah. But don't just pay lip service to the seeking of forgiveness. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. I said it a hundred times. I said it two hundred times and I've done my duty. That's not how it works. How it works is you say it with concentration as many times as you want. You can repeat it as many times as you want, but with concentration. The Prophet wasallam did not used to count how many times he did the tawbah or he sought forgiveness. But the Sahaba say more than 70, another narration says up to 100 times, so it was somewhere between there and there. But it's not like you say it 75 times, you say it 100 times, etc. It, it goes to show that quality is more important than quantity in Islam. If we look at the religious acts of worship that we are instructed to engage in by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will find that every time Quality is given more importance than the quantity. So if you're praying, if you're reading Quran, if you're seeking the forgiveness of Allah, make sure that you understand the quality is of prime importance. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has actually uh, taught us how to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've said this over and over again. We regret, we show remorse and regret. We admit we seek the forgiveness of Allah, we, we promise not to do it again, but we start off by uh, asking Allah's forgiveness, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, declaring the greatness of Allah, our dependence upon Allah, the fact that we are uh, totally dependent on Allah, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need Him, He does not need us. We also send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the beginning and at the end of the supplication that we make. Um, then we move on to more of the dua of, uh, that are mentioned in Revelation. A very interesting dua mentioned in Surah Ali Imran. Uh, in fact, it's Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, where the story of David and Goliath is made mention of Dawood alayhi salam and Jalut. Uh, Goliath who was uh, attacking Dawood and how uh, David or Dawood alayhi salam managed to overcome him. There is a dua that, that was made mention of رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 250 O our Rabb, pour upon us patience. Pour patience upon us and strengthen or make firm our feet. You know, they, they were facing the enemy. Facing the enemy? Pour patience upon us. We need lots and lots of patience, sabr, you know, perseverance, forbearance, patience, and so on. Oh Allah, pour it upon us and strengthen or make firm our feet on the ground. Make it such that we don't falter, we don't give up, we don't run away, and grant us victory over 
uh, this nation that is disbelievers. And obviously this was a dua at the time of war, a dua at the time of distress, a dua at the time of facing the enemy. And it is really a very good dua that we seek uh, the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, very interestingly, the issue of patience is not something small, it is very big. Most of us are tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to patience. And this patience is extremely difficult because everyone is tested according to their level. You know, when you test a baby, you test a baby with uh, a baby test. When you test an adult, you test an adult with the test according to their level. If we look at education, depending on what grade you are, you will be tested according to that grade. So in the same way, when you are stronger in faith and iman, and as you grow older and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be tested in that way. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sabr and not just a little bit of it, but a lot of it. Together with seeking from Allah the patience, we need to try our best to utilize the energies and the understanding that Allah has bestowed upon us to achieve that particular patience as well. So that was a very, very powerful dua. And then I want to move on to the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. The end of Surah Al-Baqarah has in it three duas, three supplications. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِن نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا That's the first one. O oh, our Rabb. Now these are powerful verses. O oh, our Rabb, do not hold against us, do not punish us if we have nasina أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا If we have forgotten or made a mistake. Now this is very interesting. The reason why it is very interesting is because we are telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while seeking from Him, saying that, you know, if we've made a mistake as a human being or if we have forgotten something, please don't punish us. You know, I always picture a little baby, a little child coming up to a father or a mother saying, you know, I made a mistake, please, I'm sorry, don't punish me. Or, I forgot, you know, I won't do this again. Imagine with us, Allah is much more merciful to us than our parents, our mothers, our family members. So what happens, we then ask Allah to say, Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw akhta'na. O oh, our Rabb, do not punish us, do not hold against us where we have forgotten or we have made a mistake. That's the first dua. The second one, which is right at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِصْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا O oh Allah, do not burden us with a similar burden that you burdened those before us with. You know, whatever Allah has asked others to do, even if we are able to do it, we are asking Allah to make it easy for us, to make things easier for us. So we are saying, oh Allah, don't burden us with that which you burdened the previous people with. Uh, that's a very interesting dua because it goes to show that yes, we have read, we have seen a little bit of what the others went through and we know their difficulty, we've been through their stories, we've been through a lot of what Allah has revealed to us, but we want it to be easier for us. Oh Allah, make it easier for us. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا those whom you put on their shoulders a burden before us, don't put such a big uh, uh, burden on our shoulders, O oh Allah. What a powerful dua. And the last part of it, رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا بِهِ O oh, our Rabb, O oh, our Rabb, do not burden us with that which we will not be able to do that which is beyond our strength. And Allah has done this. This is why Allah says He does not burden a soul with more than what that soul can handle and manage. Because of this dua, Allah says that, you know, the believers make this prayer and this prayer is recommended for all of us to make. O oh, our Rabb, do not burden us with more than what we can handle. And then we are told, we are told to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, call out to Him by saying, anna, forgive us. Lana. You know, forgive us again, using a different word. Sometimes in the English language, they say, pardon us and forgive us. You know, anna is to pardon for the littlest of things and to wipe it out completely. 
وَغْفِرْ لَنَا And we, uh, we seek your forgiveness as well. أَنْتَ مَوْلَانَا You are our protector. You are our protector. فَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ So help us, uh, grant us victory over the disbelievers. So these are some beautiful prayers that are made mention of at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. And the surah is so powerful that if we were to read the last few verses, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah every morning and evening, we will be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is over and above the Ayatul Kursi that we spoke about in the previous episode, as well as the last two surahs of the Quran. Some of the scholars add one more surah, and that is Surah Al-Ikhlas. So they say the three quls. And the reason why they say that is because قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ They all start with the term or the word قُلْ So although the two are more important, because of the power of the meaning of Surah Al-Ikhlas, it is added as one of those uh, surahs uh, together with the Mu'awwidhat, it is usually recited and read declaring the greatness of Allah because it is indeed the, the surah of faith and conviction uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now uh, this is amazing because uh, just by reading these verses of the Quran, we achieve protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We achieve uh, protection, uh, you know, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant every one of us ease. We move on to Surah uh, Ali Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who have sound knowledge. Those who have sound knowledge, they don't get into nitty gritties of the debates uh, between the people. They leave things sometimes saying Allah knows best. You know, people debate about certain things that may not be so clear. Allah says, وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ the people who have deep knowledge, they say, look, we believe in the verses of the Quran. We believe in what Allah has said. As for the others who have dirt in the heart or a diseased heart, they start arguing, they start fighting, they start creating a fitna and, and a problem between members of the ummah because they want to go into nitty gritties and argue and fight in, in a way that is destructive and not in a constructive way. So if we'd like to address a matter, of difference. We need to do so in a constructive way, not in a destructive way. Many people argue, they debate, and they want to, you know, express their feelings, their ideas, what they believe is absolutely true from the evidence presented in the Quran and the Sunnah, etc. But they do so in the most destructive way. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about wisdom and hikmah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the one who has been given wisdom has actually been given much, much goodness. He's been given a lot of goodness because to know something is one thing, but to be able to communicate it to someone else it requires wisdom. The wisdom of application, the wisdom of passing the message on in a convincing way. So if we would like to discuss matters and learn, we need to do both of those in a way that is constructive and not destructive. So as for those who have sound knowledge, they say, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابَ They say, O oh, our Rabb, do not deviate our hearts after you have guided us and bless us or grant us from you mercy. We want the gift of mercy from you to us. For indeed, you are the giver of gifts. Amazing dua. The, the people who have sound knowledge, they know that while they have the guidance, the guidance can be taken away from them. There are so many people who saw the light and thereafter they turned away from Allah. Just like there are people who did not see the light and after a while they saw the light and they turned towards Allah. So we don't have a guarantee that how this is going to end. So we actually would be required if we had sound knowledge to continue asking Allah to keep us rightly guided and not to let our hearts hearts become astray after Allah has guided us. Hence, this dua is absolutely important. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ Verse number 8 of Surah Al-Imran. 
where Allah is making mention of it and the dua is, O oh, our Rabb, do not deviate our hearts after you have guided us and grant us mercy from you as a gift. For indeed you are Al-Wahhab, you are the one who gives, you are the giver of gifts and so on. So uh, that is also a beautiful dua that is made mention of that those with sound knowledge would actually be calling out to Allah with. So my brothers and sisters, this is a, another example of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us through the Quran all these supplications. Imagine every day we're talking of supplications and the Quran is filled with these supplications. We have not yet even moved to a different type of revelation which is known as the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I've only touched on a few of these du'as. I'm really excited to be moving into those du'as inshallah. At some point in the series, we will be going through the du'as, the supplications within the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But here is another du'a that is made mention of in Surah Al Imran regarding seeking the forgiveness of Allah and uh, being saved from the punishment of the grave or the punishment of the fire. Allah is praising the believers and He says they are the ones who say the following. They are the ones who say the following. رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh, our Rabb, indeed we have believed. So we are asking you to forgive our sins and save us from hellfire. Two things are made mention of here. You're telling Allah that because you have believed, therefore you are asking for forgiveness. So you deserve the forgiveness. The justification of it is that I have believed in you, O oh Allah. You promised the believers forgiveness, so I'm asking you for forgiveness. You promised the believers savior from hellfire, so I'm asking you to save me from hellfire. That is so beautiful. So when we say, Rabbana amanna, O oh, uh, uh, oh, innana amanna, O oh, our Rabb, we have indeed believed. And there is another example of this uh, also in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Imran, رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا بِمَا أَنزَلْتَ وَاتَّبَعْنَا الرَّسُولَ فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Oh our Rabb, we have believed in what you have revealed and we have followed the Prophet. So I've done some good deeds. What are the good deeds? Oh Allah, I have believed in what you have revealed and I've followed the Prophet. So write me from among those who have borne witness. You know, الشَّاهِدِينَ which would mean those who bore witness. So this shows us that when you do good deeds, it is correct, it is permissible to seek Allah's help and to call out to Him by making mention of the good deeds. So you're going through the fact that you've done some good deeds. Oh Allah, I followed the Prophet. Oh Allah, I'm trying my best, so I want you to forgive me. Oh Allah, I'm trying, I followed the Prophet, I'm a Muslim, I've said the Shahada, I obey you, I read two rakat of Salah, I've been doing good deeds. Oh Allah, I want you to help me, to cure me, to grant me, etc, etc. It's called getting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Him by making mention of good deeds that you have done. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who definitely do good deeds so that we are able uh, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even without mentioning those good deeds. Allah already knows them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. I'm excited about uh, the next session of this beautiful uh, series and the next episode inshallah where we will go further in this beautiful beautiful uh, garden of great supplications. Aqulu qawli hadha wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.